I feel like I did. What happened? But, okay, there you go. Yeah, I lost audio of you when you started to do your put your hands up. And <laughs> oh, okay, all yeah. All your effects and stuff. You went, you went into, <laughs> you went into the quantum realm. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> it's how it works here. I, I go in and out of different uh, universes. So, oh, okay. It's the mul it's the multiverse okay. here. Uh, <laughs> Sax Dragon, welcome up, welcome in, <laughs> sexy. Thank you for being nice. sexy with us. I appreciate that. I see you do have the Spider-Man shirt on. Do you, do you like the multiverse uh, that they're doing right now with the the Miles Morales uh, games, story movies? What are we talking about? Because like oh, okay. Spider-Man, we're in three different places. We got Tom Holland Spider-Man. We got Shamik yeah. Moore Spider-Man with the Spider-Verse, and then we got Insomniac Spider Spider-Man games. Like we just did Spider-Man two on uh, screen. I'm, I'm talking. When it released, I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the movies, the, 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 the Spider Verse. The, the so Shamik Moore, Miles Morales. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I love them. They're yeah. great. They're I, probably the best. I think so too. I, man story. I agree. I think from beginning to end. I agree with you. I, I do like the Tom Holland Spider Mans too. I think that's one of yeah. the things that are is sort of, like, like Tom Holland Spider Man is one of the only, uh, uh Marvel. Uh, money makers right now besides uh wh who is it uh, uh 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 chris pratt and uh guardians, uh, of the guardians. Galaxy. yeah yeah i like tom holland spider-man it's it's so it's so tough to talk spider-man with spider-man fans man because <laughs> they are they are so you know what i mean it's it's rough out here I but know. tom holland spider-man me i don't know it's it's so tough because i grew up with all three over mm -hmm. time now Toby. i was a little kid when Toby Maguire's mm -hmm. ones came out. So I literally was in different phases of my life for each of these Spider-Man. I wish it was the, I wish it was reversed. Ironically, if these movies were in reverse order, I would have grown up age-wise with mm. the actual Peter Parkers. Yeah, yeah. Because we got old, they got the Peter Parkers are getting younger <laughs> over the last 20 years, ironically. But <laughs> like like now I'm Topher Grace, not Topher Grace, uh Toby Maguire. Topher right. Grace was uh Venom. Yeah. Anyway, he was Eddie Brock. Darth Spider Man three. Welcome in. Anyway, <laughs> Toby Maguire. I'm Toby Maguire's age now. Like I, I need I need Toby Maguire now. But yeah. I got I got Tom Holland. But I like Tom Holland a lot. I think he's a I think he's a good blend of of where Peter Parker should be. You know, um I think a lot of people were See, it, it's tough because I was a kid when when these Raimi Spider-Man came out, but a lot of people didn't have faith in uh, Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. I remember that being like a big thing. And I think he plays the pitifulness of Peter Parker and like the schlubbiness and like the reality and weight and responsibility and all the things that like beat down on Peter Parker. I think he plays that well, but he doesn't play the scientist of Peter Parker well. Mm. And then um, I think... Andrew Garfield tries to, I think it fails to, too, a little bit with the science <laughs> side of him, but they at least show him doing science. Mm -hmm. They don't show him, like, it seems quite superficial, but they do show him engage with science. We only ever see Peter Parker with Tobey Maguire, like, in one, like, uh, in one exhibit at the very beginning when he gets bit. We really rarely see him uh, work with science. And part of that is also the studio's fault because he's like the, one of the only Spider-Man that has organic webs. Mm. So everybody else has to construct their webs. Right. So that's where their science comes from. It's oh. like, it's like you know, uh, Iron Man, he has to construct his suit. Right, right. It's completely different than like Rhodey, who is war machine, but is not a scientist and cannot construct a new suit. Right, you get right. what I mean? He cannot yes. make anything else. Right. So that's kind of one of the, the weaknesses of the screenplay to where Tobey Maguire is hamstrung there because he doesn't need to be a scientist because he didn't have to make anything. He's a seamstress. He just makes outfits. Right. <laughs> that's, that's it. He makes himself nice digs, but that's it. So, so you know, um, Maguire, so, but then Andrew Garfield was hated because he's too pretty. So they were like, oh, he's too much, not even just too pretty, but he was too much of a jock. And that's, that's kind of fair. I don't know if you remember much of that first movie, but like Flash Thompson is trying to bully him and he's, <laughs> they're like the same height and he's more attractive oh, than Flash. And yes, stuff. the amazing like, Spider-Man. He, he dunks was... on a basketball goal and completely shatters the goal, stuff mm. like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it fails in that universe because Peter Parker is never downtrodden, really. Mm. He's he's never, you know what I mean? He's all he's basically in universe high school Tony Stark. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Right, right, so right. I feel like the third one does the best of that, but then there are people who don't like that because they feel like um for whatever reason they're like, oh, Tony Stark, you know, gets him too much and stuff and he doesn't do enough on his own. Right. But I liked the direction they went with that, which is as he's growing up over time and Tony Stark, spoiler alert, uh being <laughs> unalive right. <laughs> right now, it's like it's him on his own as he's progressing. I love how this uh this podcast is now just because we do a spider talk. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's it. it. The whole thing. We, we spider English good up in here. <laughs> well, gotcha. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. The no, no. I, I, um, I agree, and and uh, I, I like kind of where they were going with mm -hmm. the storyline, where they were kind of almost pushing uh, Spider-Man to be the new leader of the Avengers. Hmm. Uh, I mean, do you, did you not get that? I mean, is that uh, did they it come were off talking about that at some point? But of him it's not being anymore. the leader of the Young Avengers, ah, okay. and I don't think that's going to happen. It might, but mm -hmm. the problem here's the thing with movies, and that's one of the things that's ruining modern Marvel. Aside from screenplay, script, bad direction, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. there are issues all across the board. But it's one thing that is is damaging them, and it's the reality that real life simply is not comic books. Mm -hmm. You cannot keep. Peter Parker 16 forever when the actor is maybe he was 16 to start but he's 24 now maybe he's 24 and he looks 16 but he's going to keep aging up everyone in the cast is going to keep aging up around him and time is going to keep going on mm -hmm. also you can set a comic like we can do we can do next five years we can do an ultimate universe of the next five years in our real time and it all still be in the year 2020 but it doesn't really work like that in film. Most people will not want to see a movie like in a comic book universe in 2026, still saying it's 2020 mm. with all of the world right. itself still playing like it's 2020. So, you know what I mean? Like it, it creates these issues. So the reality is like, it's kind of hard to get him to come back f four or five years from now being 30, <laughs> still trying right. to play like he's 17 and the leader <laughs> of the young Avengers. Right, you know right. what I mean? And then you have to factor in things that, you know, were out of people's control. You have the pandemic, you have the response to that, you have writer's strikes, you have all these different things that have shut the studios down several times and the time still has to keep going on and people's lives have to keep going on too. So it's just one of those things. Like, I I don't know who you set up to be the leader of that. Mm. I don't know if that, I mean, if we talk Marvel, we're going to be here all day <laughs> well, just on this. This is my shit. This is my wheelhouse. Well, I'm, but, I mean, like, well, I mean, you know. it's just like the the whole storyline of Marvel right now, I feel like has been so oversaturated. Like there's so much like you have to literally watch mm -hmm. like 10 different shows and like, I, you know, like and watch all these movies to kind of know where this bigger picture storyline yeah, is I think, going. I think one of their greatest strengths has now become one of their greatest weaknesses. Right. And then there's just also... There's also like the reality of the film industry. Again, that's another problem we talk about outside of comics, but right. the reality of film is like, cause I don't think a lot of the things that have come out that are bad, that I would consider bad are not bad on the paper. They're not bad on the page, mm -hmm. they're bad in execution. And a part of that too is hastiness, but there's so much to factor in that you just don't know and you can't control. This is not to absolve or alleviate any of it, but it's to reconcile and reason with it within your own brain. So it's like just starting off with like contracts. It's like, okay, well, if I only have this person under a deal for the next five years, I can't stop the universe for three years and then come back. Because for me, from a logical perspective, I'm like, you know what? Uh, one thing that would have really helped you would have been like end game happens and you take a three or four year break. You are already you are leagues beyond any other cinematic universe that exists. You have the most cohesive storyline. You have the most well-reviewed films in series overall from beginning to end with the best branching narrative. No one's touching that. Even if, you know, I don't know, Aquaman sells a billion or whatever when we talk, but I'm talking about like a actual franchise yeah. and an actual cohesive thing. It's like but the machine, it's kind of like even the music industry when we talk about that. that it's its a big problem outside of that. Like, oh my gosh, if you want to correlate that, we can talk about like Andre 3000 and how people are really trying to push the machine on him yeah. and like punish him for wanting to do something else while also being ignorant of the fact of like, of what we've gotten from artists who are done with a thing or are no longer capable in a genre or in a style 
that continue anyway, and they just continue to diminish their legacy over and over again and continue to diminish their body of work. But people are not satisfied. They got to have that instant gratification of what they want when they want it. And a lot of industries work like that outside of music, including film. And again, on top of that, outside of the the need to please the masses or to keep things moving so that no one else keep, comes in and beats you to something, yes. you just have the reality of contracts. Like um, Scarlett Johansson won that big old lawsuit recently because of the contracts and the way they were worded involving streaming services yes. and all that stuff because her stuff got partially streamed and sent in theaters and that's not technically what she consented to in her right. contract so these are all these factors to fairly um consider that doesn't make the films good they still <laughs> suck they will not absolve them of that but <laughs> it is a thing it is a different suck it is a it is a completely different suck than like uh batman versus superman like yeah. they, the the suck while while still extreme <laughs> does have completely different the motivations behind it suck. Yeah, and, and I get that. And I get that idea of like trying to navigate the business while also trying to maintain the integrity of the art. Um, and it seems like they've sort of let that that go, right? Like they've just sort it's of just, go ahead. I think when I when I see it and I and I also because I deal in so much games media and stuff too, man, it's really another thing too when we talk about like shareholders and infinite growth and stuff. Like yeah. again, I think if they had stopped after in gaming, this is not shut down and never make a thing, right. but to stop, because I think like I, I'm a big comics person before a films person, and I'm not one of the gatekeepers that's like, oh, you never read a comic before the MCU, get the fuck out of here. Right, right. No, I'm embracing it, everybody and bringing everybody in, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I have, I'm versed in the stuff before it became a universe on film. Yeah. So Kang, for instance, Kang the Conqueror is yeah. a great place to go. I think in theory, in concept and on paper, that's dope. Secret Wars, dope idea, dope place to go. But the problem is you've done it too soon after like one of the most enigmatic comic book villains that we've gotten on screen and like storylines cohesive from, it's just too much too soon. And you've set yourself up for failure. Like even if these films that are bad were good or okay, I still don't think they would compare in the consciousness, in the zeitgeist, in the hearts and minds of the people overall. And I think when you didn't wait, you didn't think about a lot of things. I think a lot of Marvel's successes have set them up for failure because uh, it may not necessarily be arrogance, but it's just, it's expected. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you you brought up uh, Chris Pratt and, and the Guardians of the Galaxy, no one knew who the fuck the Guardians of the Galaxy were <laughs> before that movie. They're, they're dyed in the wool comic book Marvel yeah, fans. You're right, who, yeah. If they knew who the Guardians were, right. they were a joke and a laughing stock. They have always been somewhat like Howard the Duck right. in the universe on the side. They were not that pathetic, but they were close. <laughs> they're like, they're like a a parody of Han Solo for labs. Like it's just, mm. that's what they were, but they were able to transcend and be more than that with good writing, good direction and a great story mm. to bolster that. And then that's where you get an artistic person. You get somebody who has an actual vision and a passion for it and you give it time. You don't sit here. I think they're trying to make everybody in every movie, a new mascot or a new totem. And that's a part of the problem. You have to go back to understanding and accepting where some people are side characters and that's what they where they work and that's okay. So like Ant-Man is a good example. I think Scott Lang is hilarious. I think Ant-Man as a character and a concept is fine. It's perfect. He works, but he works best in addition to other things. Mm -hmm. He's not Deadpool. No. He cannot lead and sustain like that. He, with all the charisma in the world that Paul Rudd has, who could have imagined? Who could have thought? You and me, right here. <laughs> Paul Rudd, national treasure, level of depth. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't work like that. It's yeah. not Paul Rudd, quantum mania. It's Ant-Man, quantum mania. Yeah. And what's hilarious about that is in end game they parody their own future you don't remember an end game where they're sitting and they're trying to talk and discuss the possibility of time travel with professor hulk 
Black Widow, Steve Rogers, yeah. and Ant Man. And the kids come up and they want a picture with the Hulk. And then the Hulk asks, Do you want a picture with him? And they're like, Who is he? And he's like, I'm Ant Man. And they don't know who Ant Man is. And then he's like, Okay, never mind. And then for five minutes, he's just like trying to refuse because they obviously don't know. And Hulk is trying to make them take a picture yeah. with Ant Man to ease his feelings. Wow. In universe, nobody gives a fuck about <laughs> Ant Man. Don't do it. It's okay. No. It's okay. You have to, but like again, it's it's That's just so hard because we're so not funny. in the room. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's their failure is their own. Right. And I, I make them own it. Like I make the DCEU own every trashy, mm-hmm. awful goddamn thing I've ever had to hear about or see in my life. So they they gotta hold these L's. But it is interesting because it's not like Marvel Comics in the 80s, where it's just Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and they got final say and it's just books mm-hmm. and they're just pages and that's the end of it. Right. There are no middlemen. It's whatever they say goes. So whether it rocks or whether it sucks, it's on those two people and that's the end of it. We're talking about huge teams of people, all types of contracts, the industry at large, the machine as it moves, Hollywood, the actors, the way the, the length of terms of their contracts, it's just like there's so much. And I feel like the Marvel machine itself, much like the multiverse, is collapsing in on itself. Mm-hmm. And I like I was thinking about this recently and talking like I don't know how you would fix it or stop it. And I and it's interesting because it's like the DCU, if James Gunn can cut out the noise and and follow his own vision and actually produce something quality, because it's two different conversations. Joel Schumacher is an auteur. He can also make you an absolutely terrible film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman and Robin called. God like damn, just because somebody is has a grand vision and is an artist doesn't mean it's going to be quality. But yeah. let's let's operate from the premise that it is going to be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he has the chance right now to set up something that can surpass it because it's not a slave to anything. It's literally starting from zero. This yeah. is it. This, now, I don't think you get a second chance at this, but I think there are a lot of people in the DC camp that aren't happy with it because there's so many out there things that he's doing, but he's proved proven with the Guardians that out there can be accepted if you produce quality right. and you set your budgets and stuff accordingly. That's the other big thing. I mean, we're talking about the industry at large, but that's the other thing. Marvel has spends money like it's no object because they're used to these massive returns. They're used to 1.5 billion returns. Right. So it's easy to spend 500 million. You're still bringing in 200% profits yeah. on top. Right. But now you're spending 500 million and you're bringing back 600 if you're lucky. <sighs> like, you know what I mean? And it's if not the lucky. same, especially in an industry that demands infinite growth, right. but at the very least, some growth. Right. <laughs> like that right. is a, even though it is a technical profit, it is a loss in percentage. And that is a problem. Yeah. So a lot of these films aren't necessarily failing. They would be successes or wins for the DCEU by, you know, by comparison, but they are massive losses, financially speaking, mm. in that regard. So yeah, um, I didn't know. <laughs> no, it's all, we're gonna spend it's 30 minutes going in on Spider-Man and Marvel. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> it, but, but when you think about like how they yeah. spent, you're right, like, and, and they'll spend like $200 million for the Marvels yeah. just on advertising. Yeah, yeah Just exactly. on advertising and marketing. And, and, and Marvel's that, advertising I, budgets are insane. Yeah. Um, I know for a fact that Endgame and Infinity War were almost three hundred million. Yeah. Now, the but the deal is those brought those returns, so that's justified in a in in a way. If you're going to bring in one point five billion, then again, if you're bringing a billion dollars yeah. above your expenses and that's two hundred percent more than everything that goes out, fair enough. But the problem is when you keep doing that, or even if you do two hundred million as opposed to three hundred million, and then you're opening weekend. And that's your biggest weekend. You bring home 60. <laughs> and you know it's only going down from there. Right. And you got a shelf life right. of eight weeks. Like, it's rough. Yeah, no, and I, I really believe that the Marvels will be on Disney Plus in probably the next few weeks, right? Like, it's yeah. just, they're going to just kick it down because it was but, such a, 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 a terrible thing. And and I did hear that they were mm-hmm. going to abandon the Kang the Conqueror storyline because they're sort of, re they're, they're like revamping everything. I don't know if they're doing a full revamp. It's, it's right now on the, maybe this is, such a tough position to be mm-hmm. in like i i really liked jonathan majors i like jonathan majors as the pick for this character we're just talking about in the abstract here, mm-hmm. in, the, in the whole and i thought uh when i saw loki season one i was like oh shit because kang 
has also kind of been a joke in in more modern stuff he's been written but there's a lot of marvel and dc villains though mm. that have been jokes in the past <laughs> that have been more had more modern takes improve them and make them into something better and more threatening mm. you can look at loki you can look at the riddler you can look at even the joker you can remember uh <laughs> romero's original joker that mm. he wouldn't even cut his mustache so when he has the face paint you can see his mustache we're talking about like the 60s old adam west batman <laughs> joker you know where you battle the joker and it would be like a surf party <laughs> and an old <laughs> dancing, dance. like yeah. that was the battle <laughs> that was the fight so like people forget that though people like comics have become so self-serious that they forget a lot of the roots and origins of mm. the stuff. And I'm a big fan of things taking a different place and a different look, but that's also the reality of some of this is that it comes from the, this really goofy and infantile place to start. Yeah. I appreciate that it has um, matured over time now, but my whole point is I was like, whoa, okay, we got, we got something serious here. I don't know if you saw Loki season one, but I was like, um, the way that Jonathan Majors portrayed King, I was like, okay, I could see this being Thanos. Thanos comes out of nowhere swinging mm -hmm. in Infinity War, but we only see him in small glimpses before then. So mm -hmm. we really had no nothing to go on. People were, you know, deriding Brolin like, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be a flop. This is gonna be a trash yeah. villain. Oh, he, you know, he won't even go to the war. He's talking about uh, in the in the twelfth movie. He like, okay, I'll do it myself. <laughs> oh, this dude's been sitting down for ten years <laughs> waiting. Like everybody, everybody was trashing Thanos. Yeah. And to be fair, the way it was set up, it kind of looks like that. Yeah. But so you get Jonathan Majors in here, and from the start, he's serious. It was kind of like um kind of like Killmonger. These are like, these are villains with a presence. And with, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, okay, there's something that can be worked with here. So I was really excited about that. I like him. I like him in uh, Creed 3. I don't know if you saw him with... Um, I uh, didn't, man. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. That was actually pretty good. I like Creed. I like the Creed movie. That's a whole completely different t topic to talk about, but it's crazy <laughs> how good the Creed films are. I do. I like them a lot. A series of another, that right. might be the best spinoff series. I think you're that right, man. Seen. I think you're right. Like, uh, besides you know, besides that Hunger Game, I don't think it's going to be a series, but the Hunger the new Hunger Games I thought was excellent. But but no, yeah. I think you're absolutely absolutely right because coming yeah. off of Rocky, off of that mm -hmm. legacy, and then mm -hmm. flipping it and and even yeah. having Rocky in it, you know, having Sylvester. And Stallone. then also you think about the movies like I I love Rocky to death, but like yeah. remember he had that weird plastic robot and yeah. stuff like in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, like, I think that's Rocky movies, Four. <laughs> they got really goofy, and it's really weird because at least. Like two minutes ago, when you and I were talking about Goofy, yeah. we were talking about Marvel Comics and DC Comics. Right. This shit was set in the real world in the yeah. 80s and 90s and shit. He had a futuristic, weird Roomba robot. Yeah. Remember that shit? Like, that's <laughs> real. Do. Fucking, I like, I, I miss Apollo Creed. I feel sorry for him, but he died showboating to a James Brown song <laughs> in some Star Spangled Boxes. You don't remember that? Like, I, I like that's happened. That's, a, that's the, that's, he died fighting Drago. <laughs> In a lot of shit, my bad. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. No, I, I, uh, but yeah, look at that robot. It's, yeah. it's real life. That, that's not even like a dream that life is having. That's, that, that happens and exists in universe. They never change that. They never said, oh, you know, he was. He had the flu. Right. <laughs> right. Imagine this. Just, it, it, yeah, it looked oh no, that's not Apollo Three, but that was but yeah, man, it it, it did yeah. get goofy. But but there is something I think there is but no, something, it's still heartwarming, but right. my, my but there's something in the eighties though that, that yeah, had yeah, yeah. that cheesiness. But I'm sorry, please finish your thought. No, no, no. But I, I mean aside from that, my point is though to see something so grounded and real and then so strong come from a series that did all of that. That's not even really to deride the film. I mean, it is a product of its time. If you want, you can pick apart anything like that. You know, we can pick about Robocop where the fucking Gosh. evil robots that are chasing him are fucking weak to stairs. Like they kill scores of people, but don't let stairs show up. Oh God, <laughs> I can't. stairs, my one true weakness. And they just die. And for some reason they squeal like a pig oh, if, when they fall down that's what the robot that kills people canonically does in future detroit that, so i mean we can do that everywhere <laughs> but i'm just saying i'm just saying it's amazing to see 
a spinoff of Rocky become yeah. that. Yeah, I And agree. it's like, there's no way I would have imagined that. And really, the entire trilogy holds up as solid. That's why I say it's probably the best, yeah. because I do feel like probably every one of the three films is above an eight. Mm-hmm. People can, you know, shuffle them around where they think they need to go. It's a good hero's journey, too, mm-hmm. for the character of Adonis from beginning to end. A lot of times I, I watch these movies and we get, you know, sequels and sequences and stuff. And sometimes it feels a little out of order. Like chronologically it mm-hmm. is, but the journey of the hero or the journey of the character, like storytelling, mm-hmm. when that used to be a thing, I know, yeah. I know, I know I'm, I'm sounding old now. I remember when, sto- you when want people story used to tell and stories plot? in the, oh, in my the movies. God. But when we, in terms of storytelling, <laughs> you're a radical. The hero's journey going from A to B to C. Yeah, I think that's one of the best ones yeah. as well. I think so too. Uh, real quick question from yeah. from the chat here: uh, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? <gasps> okay, but I suck at fighting games. So oh, okay. what is it? So what is it? What are you asking me, Chad? It, it, like Nader oh, just like, wants to know which one: Mortal uh, Kombat or Street Fighter? Just a quick uh, question. Okay. That's tough. Okay. That's tough. Okay, here's here's th- here's what makes that even tougher because I'm biased. If you looked at my Instagram this summer, remember I, I was in I got all those pictures and stuff with different studio executives and stuff. I got a picture with uh Ed Boone. So <laughs> I'm already biased. That's that's the CEO of Nelder Realm and Mortal <laughs> Kombat. So I feel like I I don't know nobody from Street Fighter. Like nobody hit me up. No nobody from Street Fighter. <laughs> that being said though. That being said, see, this is why I asked what chat asked it, because Street wow. Fighter got the most iconic music out mm-hmm. the gate, except for the except for the Mortal Kombat theme, which I will give you, because the Mortal Kombat theme slaps. <laughs> but like character <laughs> themes, you got Guile's theme, you got Kids theme, like we got we got bangers, and we got bangers through the generations, and you don't really have that. Most of the music for for Mortal Kombat seems like it's stage specific, mm-hmm. but. I like I like Mortal Kombat story. I, I but I'm thinking about Roy Wood. Roy Wood has a perfect stand up joke about Street Fighter, and it's like I always love Street Fighter. It's 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 a long bit, but it's it's just it's just two dudes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they meet up and they go fight the street. Right, they don't care if the businesses is open. Somebody at the fish market getting something. <laughs> hey, bro, I heard you was talking shit. Yeah, what about it? You want to go fight? Yeah, when? <laughs> Next week on Tuesday? No, let's go right now on the street. <laughs> and that's it. And another big lesson in that is that you see people back there. There's commerce. There's commerce happening in the background. And one of the greatest lessons of Street Fighter is to mind your motherfucking business. <laughs> you don't see nobody engaging. Uh, excuse me, I don't know if that's quite legal. You see people throwing fireballs and shit. Yeah. You mind your motherfucking business. You get your shit and you go. The only people you see is somebody maybe cheering it on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Such a... <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, would be me. I would be the one who'd be like, yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh! Um, I think I I have a lot of respect for Mortal Kombat as a franchise. Mm. Um, it starts out you got two guys, you got Ed Boon and John Tobias. You asking me all these things that I really know about that you didn't probably think randomly that I would know about, but um, I love it that it comes from such a small place and from such a, a kind of honest place. And then on top of that, what it does to the industry, like that's why we have the ESRB. That's why we have all these different things for better or for worse. But like, it's crazy to think about like this, these games came out, I was probably like four or five. So I really wasn't engaging with them like that at the time, but it's crazy to think about one game franchise comes out and does something so shocking that like they, we got to have a ratings board right now. <laughs> Shit's getting real. Wait a second. What? It's no longer ET just falling in a pit I wonder... with three pixels. Right. I wonder I wonder what game set them off. Like what what it was that it was Mortal Kombat and it mm. was Night Trap, if I remember correctly. So this is back in the days of uh FMV. So this is back when um people used to make like oh boy, this is before my time. I never got to play these, but like you don't you maybe remember like you would point and click even in games. And like they would be like videos, though. Yes, yes, like yes. VHS quality videos, and like people would be live action acting. And right, stuff. right. So Night Trap had like intruders and stuff breaking into a house, <laughs> a girl's sleepover and stuff, and 
Like it, it, it was a bit much. <laughs> so this is ninety two, yeah. So oh, F and V, yeah, I'm remembering right. Um, so you know, this is like early on, and it's just so little regulation, but things go far. Like you have people getting kidnapped on screen. It mm. says like there's traps and girls getting endangered. Mm. Like it's stuff that we're kind of used to now, but we also like we have R-rated films and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we right, have right, right. in categories. Like if you look at that box on the box art. There's nothing because there was nothing that's not rated T for teen. It's not rated M for mature. <laughs> right, it's right, just right. a game. So like there's like guys kidnapping girls and groping them and <laughs> taking them in the rooms. Like that's that's actually happening in the game. You get what I mean? Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. That's little legit. So yeah. they're like, we have uh, to do nice something trap. about this. So shit. you have between that and then you have extreme, extreme, because this is pixelated right. on Sega Genesis. Watch out. Graphic violence of uh of Mortal Kombat. It's like, you know, it was a perfect storm of those two things. Um, fatalities. Yeah, uh, oh, I mean, Video Game Donkey did a great video on it. Um, I can send you a link. Uh, video Game Donkey Mortal Kombat. It's like a couple minutes. Let me see. Need to do. Like, that would be, that's actually worth watching. Let's see. Right. Mortal Kombat, four minutes and 48 seconds. Sending it to you now via this thing. Where are you? You're up here. Wait, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I need to be looking at the text over beside you so I can send it. There it goes. Okay. Yeah, so we'll but um, the... yeah, you can like he goes into a snippet. This is a four and a half minute video, but he goes into Public a snippet in the there. All right, yeah, on. we can just watch it. It's very short. All right, let me uh, hold on, let me pause it and I'm gonna I'm gonna plug Go you ahead. in because this uh, meets likes to suck. So so you can hear it too. We'll we'll. Get oh, okay, 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 okay. I got you. Over Meats shop. likes to suck. Sounded like you were saying the something completely different. Oh no, me. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Uh, okay, let's uh, let's check out go, this go, video go, go, go. and uh, and uh, let's see what's up. In the eighties, video games were innocent. They were largely considered a children's toy. The public perception of video games was Pac-Man, Mario, and Tetris. Cute characters jumping over stuff and cooking hamburgers for everybody. <laughs> Inoffensive, light-hearted fun for the whole family. Then the 90s come along and everything goes to fucking hell. Music was evil. Cartoons was evil. Wrestling was evil. Candy was evil. Game Boy ads Remember was all evil. This. Every market aimed at kids was now edgy, gross, and profane. And out of this zeitgeist, the next video game craze was born. <laughs> Kids all over the world were huddling around the screen and beating each other to death. This is a franchise that built its name on insane, over-the-top violence, and for a little bit, everything was all good until somebody snitched. It was probably some kid that looks like Randall. Dude probably got his head knocked off because he sucks and went and told his mommy. Then his mom saw the game. <laughs> She went, oh, there's my son. Then she calls the newsman. Newsman goes, oh, my God, this is a big drama. And then it's on the news, and then it's a big controversy. How do you feel about cutting his head off? What really caught people's attention with Mortal Kombat were the fatalities, which is ironic because back in the day, nobody actually knew how to do them. The game narrator <laughs> instructs the player to finish, and I quote, finish his opponent. <laughs> It's kind of funny that this was considered shocking back in the day, especially compared to the shit they're putting in these modern Mortal Kombat games. <laughs> As a fighting game, Mortal Kombat was pretty good for its time, but that's because there was only two other fighting games in existence. Punish frames, blocking combos, none of this really came into play at all. Sub-Zero had two moves. He could freeze you or slide, that's it. Blocking low allows you to block every move in the game, but you can also block high, which lets you block some moves that look like they would hit low, but not moves that actually <laughs> hit low. So I'm not sure why you would ever block high other than just to be an ass. What you're about to see are scenes from two of the most violent new video games. First we have Mortal Kombat. 
I had to, for anybody who's listening right now uh, on the audio ad, fuck it, I, I forgot about the, what's his name, Johnny what? Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage turns into a kangaroo. Into a kangaroo for his animality. <laughs> for his animality, it kicks you right off the stage. I forgot about that. That's yeah, that's good. graphic violence, y'all. This yeah. is so it was so harrowing. We had to right. change the well, law. I mean, but but I remember this this moment in life because I remember. Yeah, that's why I wanted to show you this particular video so you could see like actual Senate right. hearings. It right. cut into this. Like exactly. that's real. That's not like something AI generated on or for laughs. That's actually part of the process right that went into building this in this time and it wasn't it wasn't just video games like they're saying it yeah. was music i remember mm -hmm. like like nwa and ice yep. tea that's when you got the parental account. advisory exactly stickers. that's a completely different conversation South Park, but yeah we got into this because we were simpsons about mortal kombat and street fighter and like i said i i appreciate things that do push those boundaries you know i i don't really like that we got you know really we didn't get more restrictions it's just weird gating of way content got shared mm -hmm. but and all like it was a net positive to the industry and games we got going for it like mm -hmm. who knows you know there's no way to see when we talk about we're talking about multiverses now we're back in the mcu <laughs> <laughs> i got you again. no but there's really no way to see you know what could or would have been but it's crazy how stagnant video games were in that tame era for nearly right. 15 years you know wow. like the the type of content mm -hmm. and like the depictions of the consequences think about like games that you played on atari coleco and stuff and what the consequences for failure or or death or loss were compared to from this point onward and it's just a completely different thing you know what i mean yeah yeah, totally. Uh, it, it's up to you whether you want to continue it or not. You yeah. you got you got sidetracked when when a kangaroo came out. Well, I mean, uh, you had to stop. ADHD baby, that's how it works. <laughs> uh, and, and Latasia says that she's gonna put you in jail. So no, no, she said. Let <laughs> me say that. Sure, sure. <laughs> All right, she says put me in jail when I misbehave, but you didn't hear nothing. I didn't do anything. That's sure. true. She, you're, yeah. I'm not in chat. I'm, I'm just hanging out with you. <laughs> so hopefully, chat ain't been saying too much to me. All right, all right. No, uh, that was it. I'll let you know though for sure. Uh, all right, let's watch this video because it this yeah. is really it, it is really uh it, it shapes your perspective of where we're where of we're that at. Time. Yeah, yeah, of that and time like, and where we're at. John Cage. It's still funny. Really, there is no logic or substance behind Mortal Kombat. It's a game that thrives purely off of its coolness factor. Ninjas fighting robots fighting electricity gods with tons of <laughs> blood and guts flying everywhere. It was like the Super Smash Brothers of everything boys thought was cool in the early 90s. The uppercuts are so badass. You freaking slam a dude into the air. The whole <laughs> game stops and you just go, doom under the floor leaving a big trail of blood behind them sub-zero this move is such a classic you go bah, freeze them in place and they just gotta sit there until you walk over and go bam this will never get old ever but let's not forget about raging bumba day which is the move where raiden goes <laughs> this game encourages players to shoot uh, this gun. If you're coming at Mortal Kombat like a single player arcade game, you can get the same experience by uh, climbing into a coffin and having someone seal it and throw it into a river. The AI in these games is broken, especially Mortal Kombat 2. That game is nonsense. But if you play like an asshole and bring out your cheapest strategies, you can win until you hit the final bosses, which are fucking moronic. Fighting games are notorious for this, and yeah, the bosses in the early MK games are some of the cheapest, most <laughs> bullshit fights ever devised by humankind. Shame on people that produce that trash. It's child abuse in my judgment. I probably sound like a psychopath <laughs> saying I miss Asshole. the charm of Mortal Kombat, but there was a magic in these earlier games that's missing from modern installments. Maybe it's the digitized sprites of real people pretending to hit each other. Heroic characters more powerful than those found on any other fighting game. Maybe it's the JPEG of a dude that pops up and goes, <laughs> Maybe it's the Santa Claus hiding in the background. Maybe it's the fact that Scorpion can transform himself into a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> you were laughing at the kangaroo scorpion in my judgment the penguin. Yeah. <laughs> if you get if you guys didn't know if you did wait a minute 
Spider Man becomes a koala bear. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's none of your business. I know I got radioactive spider blood, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a koala bear with my animality, and that's what's going down. Like, this is how it goes. name is Scorpion. I was right there. <laughs> It's, what makes that even crazier than his name being Scorpion? Because Scorpion don't have much to do with anything anyway. It's not like he has poison powers. Right. But his powers are fire-based. <laughs> they didn't even get somebody from the desert or like a Komodo dragon right. or something. Yeah. They went with like, they said, oh, the dude, the, the fire guy, Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Sub Zero, the fire guy from hell, the, the, the rape. <laughs> like, hey. You know, I mean, they just you gotta you gotta you gotta uh you gotta mix it up a little, you know. That's, I think that's just where they're at. That's just you where they're at. A male penguin that laid an egg that exploded. <laughs> he wasn't even a male penguin that was just sitting on an egg. All of that happens. All of that is happening on the screen from Scorpion. I just need you to see that. Go, go back. We're going five back. We're going I back. I need you to understand all the different problems that are happening in the background. Maybe it's the fact that Scorpion can transform himself into a penguin. <laughs> Look at that. There it is. Ah. Oh, <laughs> In my judgment, they've gone too far. Oh, really? <laughs> In my judgment. Uh, yeah. It's child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Is like, it, yeah, okay, so do you think there is some sort of validity to the idea that maybe seeing violence in video games or on TV leads to violent behavior, in, in, especially well, my in young only men? Argument, I mean, not my only argument, but I mean, the best, easy, fast, and quick argument to that is what of all the violence that existed before then? <laughs> like, how do you account for that? Hey. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this isn't even like a gun control debate right. argument, right? Right here it's like are you arguing that prior to mortal Kombat, there was no violence <laughs> no one hit anybody no one stabbed anybody there were no mass anything you know yeah. what i mean there was no war this we saw we yeah. saw just an era of, of peace yeah all in, in continuum until, until mortal, mortal Kombat. Kombat. Like it's, hey. it's a really shitty argument it's like the same mm. thing i see with like in media like the argument that oh there's that gay people or lgbtq people in media mm. is going to turn the children gay yeah. as if like <laughs> okay but like these people got gay without representation like mm. how does that work like, right, right. it's like all the straight people keep making all the gay people <laughs> like if you, if you really want to go there maybe like like where do you think they keep coming from yeah but it's one of those things that it's, it's like the thing predates the product you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, is, is the Bible not full of just like unhinged violence going on all over the place? Like, I mean, we can argue all day about what the morality of said violence, but you can't be like, are you, are you gonna be like, oh, the fall of Gomorrah, that was, <laughs> that was fucking Sub Zero and Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> Motherfucker, he got him again. He should have done it. Got and him. Then, Damn it. Scorpion. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, it's a really easy, it's a, it's a very weak argument that just comes out of nowhere to attack a thing. It's, it, it sucks that we face that a lot, not just in this particular context, but they're like within politics to hmm. go there for a second, no matter what side, I really do hate that there's all these appeals to sides from stuff that come from a very like, um, liberal, easy to debunk if you look into it but betting that people won't look into it mm -hmm. kind of place you know what i mean just yeah. just immediately throw out a thing that you know will be incendiary to people as long as they don't think about it for like two seconds because it's really hard to blame all violence like this is after like Dahmer, <laughs> Gacy, like yeah. you know what I mean. After yeah. the the Sharon Tate murders, you know, yeah. like all of this shit, yeah. the Golden State Killer, like all of this shit is <laughs> right. Yeah, it fucking all... DB Cooper. I'm just thinking about all the right. crazy things that have happened in history prior to this, and they're like, nope, nope. All the violence, we we become violent. You're making the kids violent, or yeah. they like they really did. I remember that, uh, like Columbine and stuff. Oh, they had violent video games at right. home. That Marilyn Manson, it. Eminem. Which is ignorant yeah. of the fact, like, you know, um, Spider-Man 2 sold, I think, 22 million copies the first on the release day, right? 
like obviously every game doesn't sell like that but let's just say like mortal kombat 3 sold 2 million copies over its lifetime if one of those 2 million people became mass shooters let's say maybe the factor is not if if the percentage is one out of two million, it's probably not that. Yeah. <laughs> Those odds, you yeah. know what I mean? I do. Two million is a huge number of other people who would have come in contact with it to be influenced by mm-hmm. it. That's not even factoring in the people like, you know, this is before internet where everything was local co-op and couch co-op. I can't tell you how many times I would go over people's houses to play PlayStation or play Sega Genesis. Like you had to do that. Yeah. You had to physically go. Kids don't do know about that. Do. They don't know about that. You had to. Yeah. That was not optional. That's what was going yes. on. If we were playing, if you were going to play Madden 97 or whatever, and you mm-hmm. wanted to hear Joe Madden go, oh yeah, Madden, <laughs> whatever he used to say. Yeah. If you wanted to hear that, you had to go to somebody's place or yeah. people had to come to you. And that was the end of it. But yeah. my point in saying that is, usually the things that are targeted are easy targets to be targeted but they are also like the lowest common denominator with literally millions of other permutations of examples to the contrary but it's something visible it's something new and it's something easy to attack that's why it's something that continues throughout the zeitgeist we just pick up a new thing right well i mean you know with you know staying in that vein and kind of coming back to the mcu where people are sort of looking at Kathleen uh, Kennedy as someone okay. who's sort of injecting these very, uh, I guess, progressive ideals mm-hmm. into the movies. And they they even said they're going to double down. And even South Park has sort of come to this point where they're, they're the Pandaverse. They're making fun of, of where Marvel's going and how, uh, you know, people are being replaced by a black woman. Like it, the, the, the joke is like replace it with a woman and, and make her gay and make it fucking lame. That's like the whole thing. Um, where they're making fun of that what what, what do you, how do you see that sort of this idea of i don't know let's just say woke culture sort of uh, uh, permeating itself into these uh these movies that are uh, uh you know like these superhero movies like Kathleen Kennedy is just pushing this message is that bother you at all or is that something you're just like i don't care okay but but it, but right. also we're seeing a degradation to storyline in general so it, it's not like it's almost like they're putting uh, a women in the Marvels just because it's women and people are going to come out and support them and they forgot to write a good story like like I, I don't mind a woman in power that's not the problem I think people are just mad about the story but they're pushing these sort of uh, ideals into these movies you, how does that affect you when you're you know watching these these this this, uh, this sort of entertainment um. Okay, so to be fair, because I was like, I, I mean, this is a lot of things to answer. I know, I know, it was a lot. All as best I can remember. <laughs> um, but so Kathleen Kennedy isn't Marvel; she's right. Disney and Star Wars. Right, right, right. Just to be clear, so Kevin yeah. Feige is Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you're I'm right. just making but that distinction. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're Marvel, absolutely right. You're absolutely right yeah, because, because even with Marvel, but they work together. Marvel and Sony Marvel. Right, right. Those are also two separate entities. Right. The whole so X Men thing, sure. right? When you say Kathleen Kennedy, we are talking like you can't whether you whether people like a thing, because I am seeing people in discourse equate things with other things that don't correlate with each other well, just because they don't like a person, regardless on the side. My point in saying yeah. that is you can't be like the Marvel's failure is the fault of Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, Not yeah. you, but I'm talking about because they right. are related. That, you know and, what I mean? And that's that would be what like people saying, are saying. Right. And and yeah, exactly. I'm, that would be like yeah. saying Kevin Feige is the reason solo a Star right. Wars story is bad. Like okay. that's just that, 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 No, no, that, that, that's that's a good differentiation. A differential there. Yeah, but onto the topics of what you're talking about now, I'll get into that too. Because I mean there's still something to be said about that even within uh Star Wars. I was mm-hmm. a pretty big Star Wars fan for most of my life. Now I don't ever want to watch anything Star Wars ever again, but we will <laughs> we will talk about that. But it's not the politics about mm. that. That's the problem for me. Mm. Um, but we'll get into that. But when we talk about, there's a, ooh, this is a, a big layered pro, um, discussion because you have to be having it in good faith mm. with a person that you feel is having it in good faith. I see a lot of people to where uh, someone sent me recently, for instance. Um, let me see if I can go by. Uh, let me go into my DMs on Discord. They recently sent me. Do do do. Going scrolling up. Give me one second. Um, 
so yeah, they were like, hey, so I haven't watched the Marvels yet, and this has spoilers, but I'm glad I watched this. The Marvels is awful. The MCU is dead. And now all up in the um in the thumbnail, it's got flop, it's got Kevin Feige in a long-haired wig, and it's got um what's her name? Uh uh, uh, Captain Marvel in a oh, shirt that says MCU. Brie Larson. So it's like Brie Larson. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, so it's, I was like, hmm, I'm a little suspicious of this because like they could have just presented the argument or whatever, or just had a thumbnail, but like there's, there tends to be a lot of signifiers. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, before I engage with this, let me go look into the channel. And I go through the channel, right? And I'll, I'll do that for a second, but like 95% of all the videos are quote unquote anti woke and mm -hmm. they're just really. I hate black people and I hate women. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, the crux of the thing. And that's two different discussions being had, whether or not something is pandering or whether or not you just hate inclusion mm -hmm. and you just hate a group mm -hmm. because a lot of this is veiled pipelines. So like this whole thing was leading to another thing. And it's like, it's like the YouTube rabbit hole that was leading some people to Nazism mm -hmm. and leading to like acts of terror and stuff. It's kind of like that to where people will present a one kind of decent or even possibly good argument, but then it is surrounded by a whole bunch of other stuff afterwards meant to like kind of entrap people and lead people down that pathway. So in my discussion with him, um, I kind of want to maybe even read some of that. I was like, uh, <laughs> said not watching that not watching the the movie either and i can i can agree it's probably a stinker that's more of disney not learning lessons and trying to force stuff but that's a a, a conversation for another time there are, are several good takedowns of that movie online that don't have to lead me down a neoconservative rabbit hole mm. uh <laughs> but like when you have these these takes that are like clearly have a bias and that could be either way there's i think one of my biggest frustrations as a person who's into film and cinema and also a fan of marvel stuff is i see people um e not even necessarily on the left this is just going to be marvel shields that'll pretend quantum mania is as good as infinity war you know what i mean like i have to live with this in my real world like are you kidding me and what frustrates with me about this is like the same thing i had to deal with with trying to get dceu people to want better it's like I'm a Marvel fan from a comic standpoint and always have been, but I like DC. DC has a lot of great stories. I've mm -hmm. always, especially with like 80s and 90s Marvel, and I'm still going to get back to this. We're just talking about so much at once. I know, but, I know. Um, I always look at like uh, Marvel more of like humanity dealing with godhood. And some of them get godlike powers. You have people yeah. like Tony Stark, who is a noted drunk. He's a womanizer. He was, uh, he was, he was like a lot of bad things, even outside of the MCU. But he got godlike abilities, and now he has to deal with the responsibilities of that and deal wrestle with his past. He's he's literally a god at at one point who still has alcoholism, <laughs> which is its own. Like right. you know, they kind of hint at that a little bit, mm -hmm. and um. Iron Man 2, which was a terrible movie, but still they do, they hint at that. But like, imagine for a second in our real world, you got Iron Man, but he's also a fucking lush right. who can go, like, if he's having a bad day, now he's got fucking weapons grade right. shit. Well, I mean, that's what's so appealing about the boys, right? Like, the boys exactly. is a perfect example. Yeah, of but that. again, but that, that's them taking that era mm -hmm. and playing it now yeah. and playing it straight. Yeah. And that's what one thing that gives the boys its own unique space. Mm. The boys, Invincible, yeah. these are places like I feel like they are they are being kind of counterculture to what's being represented. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing. Like I, I, I wish people would just play to their strengths, be mm. it DC, be it Marvel or whatever. You don't have to like do it all. And I feel like, like for instance, Marvel gets a, chided a lot for not being gritty or whatever, even though people who say that will ignore the fact that a guy literally wiped out half of all yeah. life in the universe, the ash including and women away. and children yeah. and everybody. He didn't give a fuck. Animals, like people died in helicopters. Imagine your pilot gets vaporized while you're in the air. Oops. Everybody on the plane still dies. Marvel still hasn't reckoned with that. And right. that pisses me off. Yeah. Because sure, everybody who got dusted can come back, but what about everyone who dies as a result of being dusted? Right. You get what I mean? Like or, if the or, pilot gets dusted, right. everyone on the plane dies, the plane crashes, anyone who, who's where the plane crashes, they die, all that kind of right. stuff all over the world. There would be all kinds of people who didn't become dust, and you can't just like 
and they don't ever really reconcile. With right. Well, I mean, New York City being demolished millions of times and all these people, yeah, exactly. it's like, yeah, I get what you're uh, saying. Oh, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I like about the boys, though. Mm-hmm. The boys will, will, will reconcile with those consequences. They will have, like, like the whole boys starts with a train running through a person <laughs> to get to a crime. Yeah. Like, and that's what sets everything off from where we the POV see it. It yeah. actually was technically happening before that, but we don't know that. Mm-hmm. But that's still, you know what I mean? Right. Like, and that's a real thing that could happen. And mm-hmm. that's one thing, like they kind of wrestle with it a little bit, I guess, in Civil War with the Sokovia Accords, even though that movie pisses me off because the Sokovia Accords really just should have been the Tony Accords because <laughs> all that shit was Tony Stark's fault. Yeah. I still don't understand how people want to be mad at me for not being <laughs> Team Stark. Sokovia <laughs> is Tony's fault. It is 95% Tony and 5% Bruce Banner. Mm. Nobody else had any say in him building a murder robot that wanted to destroy all of humanity. Like, yeah, people died, but all the people who died only died because you built the murder robot. So, like, for him to get to be like, I've got the high ground. We should we should let the government oversee us. We need to be in check. Yeah. Like, with like not a hint of irony or self-awareness. Like, motherfucker, you did it. You when the last you ain't even see, you don't even see Steve Rogers with a hammer until endgame. And it's Mjolnir. When you see him in there building some shit you know he didn't even know he said it seems to work on some form of electricity in avengers he don't know none of this shit don't try to put this on milk <laughs> but he gets away with it mm. he gets away with it scott free if he didn't die in endgame and i love I, look i'm i'm a big fan of mcu's iron man mm. but if he didn't die in endgame we was actually gonna have a problem because this motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> He gets confronted by a black mama in an elevator about it, and then he tries to spin it like that's everybody else's fault that the black kid died. <laughs> Sir, you did this. <laughs> you did this alone and in secret on purpose. Yeah. What are you doing? How is this my fault? Excuse me? All right. Back into... To, to, so, I, I think... Oh, my gosh. This topic is so hard to talk about. Um in good faith. But I think one of the things that I I wanted to say was, for me personally, I I, want to try to, to, I guess, look at it from a personal standpoint. Um, I think there's a big difference between inclusion and representation and pandering. Mm -hmm. When I see myself in a film, I'd like to see, like, like, if you're going to put me in a, in a, in a universe, let's just say in comics, right? Uh, You don't, I don't need you to make Peter Parker black. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I don't need Peter Parker to be from South Memphis like me. Uh, I think that's one thing I really like about Miles Morales. It's just like, okay, they just made another person right. and he got bit by a radioactive spider. Cool. That's the end of it. That's something that theoretically could happen. Anybody could have been bitten by the spider. That's one of the cool things about Peter Parker and Spider-Man as a concept. And that's one thing I love about the game is if you ever get a chance to play them is they do play with that. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that literally anybody could have been that. It's not Tony Stark with his genius level intellect building the thing that gets him the pulsar rays. It's not being born a god like Thor. It's not accidentally making the chemical formula and the gamma radiation to become the Hulk. Mm -hmm. Anybody could have been bitten. And he just happened to be the one that was. And then you make that person into a character and you build stories around that character. So when we get Miles, it works better because Miles feels organic to what he is. He's black. He's Puerto Rican. He grows up in a biracial part of a a, a biracial family. He's in a um, his mom is running for office. His dad is a cop. He's going to public school, but then he's pulled out of that and he's going to private school. But it's like he's wrestling with a lot of identities, but nothing that he is is taking away from Peter Parker Mm -hmm. and it doesn't distract from Peter Parker. Now, again, though, the reason I say that has to be argued in good faith, because if you go online, how many cishet, angry white men, neoconservatives hate Miles for simply existing. Right. You get what I mean? Like, you're oh, yeah. asking me the question in good faith, yeah. but there are a lot of people who are also oh, yeah. asking that question to where they literally don't want these characters to exist in any form, right. not just the transformation. Because I personally am not a big fan of make a character black right. or insert black character 
who's only there and black, but they have no no narrative or thematic resonance. They have no connection. They are maybe even a bad representation of what they are. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I'm not a fan of that. And that's the conversation that can be had. But yeah, I, I at the same time, a lot of these takes that are being had are bad faith arguments meant to constantly, you know, just edge mm-hmm. out the conversation of, oh, I don't see myself as the protagonist or the the soul i all everything doesn't revolve around me and only me and thus is bad yeah and that's a completely different take so like a good example um i i could argue oh, i hate the term woke for one because it's do now become too nebulous mm-hmm. like it to me it was always nebulous but now it literally is anything i don't like right. you can go on youtube and type woke <laughs> and you will find conservatives and neoconservatives yeah. like arguing against each other not even knowing it because <laughs> of the way that a thing is phrased or who said it mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. just that like it could be it could be a democrat in uh, against gun control <laughs> and they would find a way to find it being woke yeah. even if they themselves are an NRA member. You get what I mean? Like it just becomes mm. such a broad thing to where it loses all meaning. And it, when a thing does that, it makes it hard to have meaningful discourse. So um, it's really ha- hard to have conversations like this outside of like a sit down like mm. this because I don't know where a person is a- approaching this from. Is right. a person saying woke literally like, I mean, there were so many people if you go to youtube and you look up like spider-man 2 there's still so many articles hating on it but so many people were they they if you go on wayback machine we're gonna be like oh this is gonna flop and so on or saying miles morales spider-man miles morales that game was one of the worst ones and stuff and there's literally nothing but so much dialogue about him being black that's it there's so much there's there's very little like when i played it on stream I, 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 I tend to review and critique games as I go along. And dude, I'm tearing this game apart at so many different levels, be it gameplay elements and so forth, and Spider-Man 2 especially. Oh my gosh, we had to play as Mary Jane. And I wasn't like, fuck, I gotta be a woman. Ah, I gotta be a girl. This fucking sucks. I'm like, one, it's Spider-Man. Why am I not one of the Spider-Men? Make her a Spider-Woman. That's fine. My problems were the way that this game plays and functions, you're like a god for most of the game. And then all of a sudden you're absolutely powerless. When you're Mary Jane, two hits take you out and everybody (laughs) has guns. Everybody (laughs) has guns and I got to do a sneaky thing. And here's the thing. It's a gameplay um, system and engagement that you haven't engaged in before. It doesn't ease the player into it. It's just a massive turn. So that would be like if I was sitting here taking my driving exam and then all of a sudden I blinked and I was on the fucking Formula One racetrack. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh shit, wait, what a second. I don't even know. What? Like, I, I haven't even figured out how to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's it's that jarring. These are gameplay elements. These are narrative decisions. That's what I'm attacking. I'm not attacking, oh shit, there's, there's women in this right. game. <laughs> women have agency <laughs> holy shit wait a the second fuck? you are she's not gonna just sit in a room and wait to be rescued <laughs> ain't this a bitch like but that's how but that is a large part yes. of the discourse and that's what makes it frustrating to to approach it because like if when you do that and you're engaging it even if you engage it in good faith and with facts and logic and reason all of a sudden that don't matter to the facts and logic crowd all of a sudden then it gets to be feelings for yeah. them and there's nothing I can do. Sure. Like, um, so going back into Disney, oh my gosh, we can go. Well, I mean, when you Star think Wars. about like Little Mermaid, you know, that was a huge yeah. thing that well, I, I think Star a lot of Wars people. is a good place to yeah. go okay, because go that's ahead. something I loved that okay. I don't anymore. And mm-hmm. since that's something where like I have a long history with yeah, it, and I'm a person who's pretty left biased leaning, <laughs> I can in- offer a lot of perspective Please. of it to uh, to counterpoint something there. And I think that's where we get into a lot of pandering there that's not good and i think it's actually negative for the cause like again you and me are going to talk good faith i'm not i'm not saying oh my gosh oh, okay i guess which one is that the the second movie uh what is that the last jedi mm-hmm. i was like oh snap that's the chick from um uh jurassic park let's go <laughs> i was excited oh no this movie offers so many problems. Look, we can talk Star Wars for the next five or six hours. You, you're talking to somebody who grew up loving Star Wars mm. and now never wants to see a Star Wars related thing as long as they That's live. Sad, I have not man. watched a Mandalorian. I don't give a fuck yeah. that it's good because I care about narrative consistency and the way that shit works for me is once you fuck something up that fucks up the whole world mm. of it, 
it no longer works for me. I don't care that there's like little pockets of good in it. Like I know that the entire bubble of it is broken. It's kind of like Game of Thrones for me. Mm. Game of Thrones would be one of my favorite things. And and once we get to season seven and eight, it gets so broken that I can't enjoy it because like my favorite episodes, because I know what the end of it is. Like, it's 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 just one of those things. I, I watched House of the Dragon, and that's one of the few things I could kind of connect with. Mm. And the only reason is because there's almost a thousand years between House right. of the Dragon and episode one. Right. So it doesn't really matter. What happens a thousand years from now, we will be lost to the sands of times as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So right. I'm okay with it. It's kind of like... But um, anyway, going back to Star Wars, Kath, uh, not Kathleen Kennedy, uh, Holdo. Admiral Holdo in that movie does everything the worst possible way. And it's frustrating because when we talk about pandering, I think you give ammunition to the side that does legitimately hate to see inclusion and inclusivity. We're not talking about like people doing bad or just replacing somebody, but literally just to see them in film. They liked Star Wars better when it was 99% white and Billy D. Williams, and that's all they want. That's all they, want. <laughs> they just want Billy, that's it. <laughs> They want, to see. they want to see 999 <laughs> white people from Aliens and Billy D. Williams. If you got more than one Billy D. Williams, you got too many black people. Uh, you, you better quit it. Yeah. Now, <laughs> but when you look at that movie, like she's combative and she's dismissive and she's withholding information. She herself kind of causes the mutiny uh, upon herself. And it's like that's not a good representative of a female leader. Mm-hmm. Like, why Why would you do it that way? Like, surely there's better ways to do that. Like, or even like, um, what's her name? Captain Phasma. You remember how much they, uh, she was uh, Brienne of Tarth from um, oh, yeah. from Game of Thrones. Yeah, 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 yeah. The woman who played Brienne of Tarth, like super the tall, tall lady. lady yeah. uh, she's Captain Phasma. They keep propping her up. She, all she does in Star Wars is lose to Finn in several movies. She never does anything like that. You've got a stormtrooper in all silver armor that's taller and has more power than all of the other stormtroopers. You've made her female and you've done nothing with her but make her like a punching bag and like <laughs> pathetic and weak and stuff. And I'm like, is that who is that for? Mm. Is that supposed to be for girls? Like I try to when I when I look at something and I feel like it's pandering, I'm like, okay, well, who is it for? And is it at least a good representative of it? And I don't feel like either one of those are. Like Holdo just fucks up at every single turn and makes the worst decisions, but plays it as if it's the best decisions. Like in an army, it like unless like it's not one of those things where she felt like maybe there's a spy on the team or something like that. She's just withholding information to keep Poe in his place and stuff. And it's like okay, but you got a potential mutiny on your hands. And as far as everyone else on the ship knows, you're in charge. You're not telling anybody what's going on. And this is their last chance. I don't know if you saw the movie or know the stakes yeah. of that fight, but what's going on there, this is do or die. Mm-hmm. Everybody on the ship dies if this doesn't succeed. Right. Like at the beginning of the film, there's literally a suicide run that I think was like semi-successful, but everybody who participated just about died right. in it. Yeah. This is the remaining bits of the resistance. The stakes are high. Right. Let your soldiers know. And so it's like, who is this content for? Who does this represent? And it's it's like in this case, not only have you you done this poorly, but I feel like whatever you hoped to achieve, you've done it the worst possible way. So now you've hurt you've hurt your side both times. You know mm. what I mean? Like it's not the same as Mary Jane in Spider Man Two, whereas white woman exists and I am angry. This is now, this person, it would be terrible regardless of gender and so forth. Mm-hmm. And I, as a person who hates this gender and or race, get the added benefit of it. Mm-hmm. And the person who is represented by this also get to lose because this is me. This is my only example or one of my main examples of female leadership. And you just like, she's like the worst. Why did you make her the worst? Like, you know, if, if you're going to pander, right? Mm-hmm. Like, why not make right. her the best general right, right, of all right. time? If right. you're going to go there. Right. Like, but why did you make her the worst? Um, <laughs> well, it, oh I mean, gosh, I guess I guess there is a reality right. to it because not every um, – not not every woman leader is a good leader. Not every yeah, but I'm man is a good gonna be your but, Right, right. Leader. I know what you're saying. Yeah, Star Wars has how many fucking male generals right, right, right. and commanders. And then so why the exactly. only female that you have, why would you have her be terrible? Be the first one that you're that. gonna show leading a fleet. And the first thing you start doing is literally like starting a mutiny due to like inaction and keeping like everyone 
in the dark about something very pivotal, literally to punish one soldier for at most insubordination, yeah. even though everyone on your ship is living under the fear of possible death because of this <laughs> reprisal. Like it's just, it's petty and it's weird and it gives it gives light to the bad faith arguments that other gotcha. people make. Yeah, dude. and that's that's what makes things so problematic. Um, I don't know. I, I've always been of the perspective that I, I really, and I guess that might be a little bit of a hot take. I don't want to say I don't need to see myself in films. I like to mm. see myself in films that can be made for me. Mm. I like stuff like Blade. You can just make a character. You can just give me powers, mm. or you can just like, again, you can get like Miles Morales, or you can try and do something organic. Not to, I mean, I, I believe there was a huge dust up, which was ridiculous. But when uh, Nick uh, Fury was black, when mm. he was Samuel L. Jackson, yeah. I think there was. I mean, I was still a pretty kid at the time. But like, that's one of those things to where really very few people are like, oh, that's pandering and woke <laughs> in this day yeah. and age. But it at the same time, you didn't have him constantly like, uh, shilling for grape soda and fried chicken throughout <laughs> the thing, or you also didn't have him as the first leader, like in Marvel, oh. like an actual leader, and he's just god awful and combative and contrary and like yeah. just doing like the worst things all the time, just right. the aloof goofball that don't know the front end of his gun from the handle, like you know what I mean, yes, like. Yes. Like it's how it was in the fucking eighties and nineties, right? Like, cause this is what yeah. this is what we're coming from. We grew up in a time where it was like every black or person of color on TV was the criminal, you know, oh, was exactly. the pimp, but, and, I think, and and just I think you a point you're bringing up by accident right now too mm. is a lot of these people that I see make these takes that aren't like the young guys who are out here for clout mm. are people who grew up in the Stallone. Van Damme, yeah. Schwarzenegger era, right. where every single person was at least an analog for them. They didn't mm -hmm. look like them, but you get what I mean. Right. All the action heroes. So now you got to deal with Michael B. Jordan and Denzel and Will Smith. You know what I mean? And, and like, but I'm saying from like a pure, like, I guess neutral standpoint here. There's like, there's this, there's this frustration I I see in here. It's like when people were mad that um, the new um, it's called. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then mm -hmm. at the end, it becomes Captain America and the Winter Soldier. That's the name of it. So um, what's his name? It's becoming, uh, what's his name? The actor, I can't think of his name right now. Oh. Um, Mackie, something Mackie. Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie is now canonically Captain America, just right. like in the comics. In the comics, though, uh, Steve Rogers and Falcon just agree to share the name, just like mm. Peter Parker and Miles Morales both go by Spider-Man. Right. Sometimes they call each other by name, Sometimes they call each other by Spider-Man and they have everyone else call them right. Spider-Man. But even in like in the show and in reality where we live, there are people who still want to differentiate between Captain America and Black Captain America. There are people that literally cannot stomach yeah. <laughs> the idea yeah. of anyone holding a mantle, even if the mantle itself is literally just drugs and a shield. Yeah. Like that's something anyone can have. That's not like even the same. That's before we get to the like the topic of like a black Tony Stark, which is also a completely viable thing in the yeah. multiverse. Why not? But still, yeah. that's that's a completely different thing yeah. to where like a person's powers or identity is like completely like tied to the character and identity of a person. Where like anybody could pick up a shield. Anybody could have been injected with the super soldier serum. In fact, someone was injected with it as a prototype first. But I'm not even talking about the other black guy from um, the show, but Red Skull in the first movie. That's what it was. He yeah. also took the serum. It amplifies good. Good becomes great. Bad becomes worse. Right, yeah. That's the whole thing. And you see another. Nobody's like. How dare they make a completely different person <laughs> to a super soldier? What are you talking? Right. What that? They were they completely fine with the Nazi guy getting to right. be one. You know what I mean? Right, so right. I, there's, it's frustrating to to have these talks, regardless of the political leanings, mm -hmm. left or right, because there's so many either bad faith arguments or so much bias in these directions mm -hmm. to where there are people there are people who will support these awful star wars films or the pandering <laughs> examples that you will see in the marvels or even like there's a shot there's a shot in end game that a lot of people cringed at i was okay with it i was okay with it because i'm a comics fan and i knew what it was but my caveat to that is just because a thing exists in comics does not mean you can just put it in the movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to know now some things can be annoying wink and a nod but i feel like 
you kind of need to know your audience and you also, you need to weigh the pros and cons. So the thing I'm talking about is in the middle of the final fight in Endgame, there's a scene where all the girls come together and help Captain Marvel yeah. get the gauntlet, okay? Yeah. And a lot of people hated that and derided that as pandering and stuff. Right. And I'm, I'm on both sides of this, actually, right. because I this does exist. There's an Avengers team called A-Force. It's an all-female team, and it has existed long before, I think, even the MCU. It is a thing. It's like the West Coast Avengers. <laughs> the Avengers are in New York. But uh -huh. There is an L.A.-based Avengers God team, is. and it has been for 20-something years. It exists. So you can't just be like, uh, Kevin Feige just came up with this this week to pander. Mm. Where I think it is pandering is in the screenplay and its delivery because it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Captain Marvel does not need your help. Right. They they literally say she's uh, she's got help or whatever. Right. She's not alone. She got help. That's something you say for Pepper Potts. That's something you say for Gamora or <laughs> Nebula, somebody right. who can die. Right. She literally in that fight takes a power stone punch to the face. Anyone else, even the Hulk, do you understand that yeah. would atomize them? Right, the power right. stone can decimate. Into, he used the power stone in Infinity War to throw a moon. That is how much power <laughs> is in the power stone. He punched Captain Marvel with the power stone and she ate that like it was a regular ass ham and cheese sandwich and she wanted some more. She was not even out. Like So my whole point in that is, one, it was a thing. It was a thing that did exist and have basis, but because you delivered it so mm -hmm. poorly, it did end up looking like pandering, even if it was a thing, because you've given, you've set up a scene around the one character out of the 30 women you had the option of, the one who did Doesn't not need, need this thing to happen. You could have gave it to Mantis. I'm thinking of like all the people who were there. Like, it's not that they, like, it's that she can literally survive a neutron bomb. Yeah. She is fine. Right. Let her be the backup. But the problem is there, they've decided that there are certain people that they want to prop up to be the future yeah. faces of Marvel. So, uh, and that's not, I'm not even talking about the gender pandering. This goes back to like Paul Rudd and Ant-Man and mm -hmm. stuff because they have certain people leaving the franchise. This is again, back into the business. They're making decisions in the films based on future returns they want to see or future projects they want to make narrative be damned. Yeah. So they took a thing that technically wasn't pandering, made it pandering, made it worse. And subsequently, like, to me, it is kind of a blemish on the film yeah. um, because it doesn't need to be there. And while it doesn't bother me because I know it exists, it's just one of those things right. that it's like I can see how a person mm -hmm. who is not arguing in good faith and not secretly a Nazi or anything <laughs> like that can be put off by this because yeah. it just comes out of nowhere. And it's the character who would need the help the least. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Right. We had so many there was no need just... for that. But but I think you you describe it properly because you're right there is a business aspect to it there is a pandering yeah. aspect to it and but but uh, but they are trying to prop up and this is a business they're trying to keep going and, and yeah but, i mean which, and, but good i think some of that is not my point in saying that is i don't think all of that necessarily is politically motivated i think mm -hmm. some of it is right. and there are discussions to be had but in that instance i think that's more than politics i think it's more Business, business going forward right because they know this movie no more steve rogers no mm. more iron man no more so so many other mainstays i mean i don't know if they knew no more chad with Bozeman, rest in peace yeah, uh happy. but you know it, you have a lot of leads that are leaving and leaving for good at the time um what's her name scarlett johansson was out like these are people like you have to you really don't have to do this. And again, that's where if I was the director and I was the filmmaker, I would have made this film more contained and I would have said, hey, that's it. We take a break. Let's take three or four years off. Like it is emblematic of a thing that is an industry issue as opposed to a director issue because you can look at somebody like um, James Cameron. He'll take 15 years between Avatar and Avatar 2. Right. The movie comes out. When the movie comes out, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm one of the people I liked Avatar for what it was. It's fine. <laughs> It is, uh, it is uh, Dances with Wolves yeah. in Space with Smurfs on Ice, right, right, but right. it is a good movie. It's very pretty. Right. That being said, I'm one of the people that thought we were never going to get an Avatar 2. <laughs> Excuse me? It has been 10 years. You realize? I took a girl to see Avatar. <laughs> I think I was in like the 
what was I in my sophomore year of college? You know how long ago that was? I, I thought we were never getting an Avatar 2. I won't lie on that. I, everything I've said so far on this podcast has been the truth, and I'm going to keep it that way. Hey. But my point in saying that is there is a key difference between being able to be someone who's 100, not really 100%, but more your own boss or a part of just the machine of Hollywood and movies as opposed to the machine of, of a machine within a machine. Yeah. So a machine within the matrix. So if you look at the MCU as a matrix itself, when you see these like phase one, two, three, four, five, and they've got 15 movies slated and they have to be interconnected and they have to have a certain timeline and they have like... um of uh, Spider-Man, I think the very first one got in trouble because they slightly messed up the timeline of of Marvel Civil War, Captain mm. America Civil War, because it, the very opening crawl messed up the New York attack in Avengers. Stuff like that. Like, but all these things have to be considered. Right. They are slaves to a machine within a machine, as opposed to James Cameron with Avatar just having to deal with mm. whoever the overarching production company is and movie release schedule. But that's it. That's the end of it. But now because you've got a machine within a machine and then it operates and is beholden to not only all these different shareholders and executives, but when we talk about executive producers and producers and stuff, there's there's stuff that's like under the umbrella of Marvel or the MCU, but every single film also has its own directors, its own yeah. producers, its own executive right. producers, its own shareholders and stuff. Nobody's sitting here giving 200 million per film. That's not how it works. So you right. have all these different individual crews and connections and stuff. So it, it just becomes chaotic. I, I think uh, in typing him, uh, my, the person who DM'd me the, the Nazi thing by accident, and that was the thing too. That was the other thing that's so deceptive. Just to go back to that for a second mm -hmm. though, is this person, is someone I would consider talking to me in good faith, just like you. Hmm. And they 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 were like, I'll tell you their literal response to me. Let me say this. Uh, I mean, I can't be bothered to check everyone on the internet out to see if they are a Nazi before I send a link. That's his exact words to me. I'll read it again. I mean, I can't be bothered to check everyone on the internet out to see if they are a Nazi before I send a link. So like, that's, so it, it, yeah. first of all, <laughs> there's, there's problems within problems there. Yeah. But like, that's, that's kind of what we're dealing with on a completely different level to yeah. where like, there are some people that are able to make good and persuasive part uh, points with uh, deceptive or nefarious intentions mm -hmm. beneath that. And Absolutely. it's like, so the, the person who sent me this um, is not a person who was looking for the babe, and they're not a person who's, uh, whose political views align with that person's. But because the messaging of just that one video did, and they didn't, like, they really didn't question it any further than that, they accidentally sent me something that would have sent me down there. And it's like, um doo, 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 i sent them a whole thing yeah he's like yeah first time i watched the guy usually i go to rob rob is a uh, comics explained i'll plug that channel he's a fantastic um youtuber who goes really in depth in comics if you're interested in a lot of comics lore but you don't have time to read fucking 40 years of comics go check out <laughs> comics explained anyway he said yeah first time i've watched the guy usually i go to rob for marvel stuff but he popped up i don't entirely disagree with him on, on the over womanization of the stories what i once knew uh, which is a completely different discussion that again that's what i was telling you about like a lot of these arguments that i see sometimes are people that i feel are coming from this stallone schwarzenegger jcbd era because this mm -hmm. person is like six or seven years older than me yeah. and but that does explain why he was going so hard on it um mm -hmm. uh, i would say borderline sexist <laughs> but i chalked it up to youtuber sensationalism not some wider hate you get what i mean like yeah. so that's a well-meaning person who resonated with the the general malaise of feeling like there is pandering going on, but unwilling to look even a little bit deeper into the content he was absorbing mm -hmm. and willing to admit, okay, now that I've looked at his videos page, yeah, there seems to be a lot of Nazi shit on it, I guess. Like, like that's not me, that's him admitting yeah. that, you know right, what I mean? Right. Like from his own lens. So it's just, it's it's crazy because it's it's, it's that's the landscape we're in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you and I are having a discussion and there are other people viewing us have it, but that's the reality. There's a lot of people making content like this and they're making it very well. Mm -hmm. Like we've grown up in that age now to where you can do this. You can, you can, you can shape arguments like this that can lead people down these paths 
with you know just <laughs> the gentlest of nudges right. because oh you know I'm I'm tired of seeing these stories that I grew up become womanized yeah. like even I think like okay so I watched the entire She Hulk series and I had high hopes for She Hulk I like <laughs> She Hulk as a character in comics yeah um She Hulk is is interesting she's an interesting counterplay interestingly enough to like Deadpool she's like a straightforward she can she breaks the fourth wall and is aware oh. but un, but unlike deadpool she's not clinically insane like <laughs> in deadpool kills the universe or i think it's Dead, deadpool kills so many people all the time he has so many comics and, and graphic novels literally deadpool kills something <laughs> but i think it's in deadpool kills the universe deadpool kills everyone all of the superheroes and supervillains in the marvel cinematic in the marvel universe yeah. because he becomes aware that it's all a comic oh, and thus nothing matters but he like he kills everybody, yeah. like even people, friends, good people, Steve wow. Rogers, everybody, and that's what he does. Like that's how crazy and insane he can be. Right. And it's also like the cancer, and like I I do like that they kind of deal with that a little bit now. Like if you're a permanently regenerating person, but you have like brain cancer or something like that, maybe the mind itself is not regenerating, just the physical yeah. cells. So he's still like dealing with like Alzheimer's and dementia and shit, yeah. while also having like godlike powers. So it's like, <laughs> so yeah, he kills the entire universe because he becomes <laughs> he becomes right. aware that nothing matters. Wow. Um, so in That's theory, I liked what um, what She Hulk could have been, but I did not like the show. That's a good example. <laughs> what, you didn't of, like Megan the Stallion twerking? Is um, that's a good example of pandering there. <laughs> but like, a lot of the problems of it is just like it's it's poor representation and it's poor writing, and then it's like it attacks what you know of the world that exists. Mm. So it's not like, I don't give a fuck about who I saw in a comic in 1970 and shit. I don't give a fuck about like, oh, uh, the womanization or anything. It's it's like, um, there was a line that got derided by so many people and a lot of Nazis did use this, but it, it is what it is. The, the thing that's frustrating again about the pandering that goes wrong is it becomes fodder for the people who are bad people to use, mm. and it exists. They're not taking you out of context. It's not AI generated. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You did this. You had all the control. <laughs> this yeah. is all you. So there's like a part where I think Bruce Banner as Hulk, he's Professor Hulk, and he's trying to teach her because she's a Hulk now. Um, that that came about kind of like the comics, and so that was cool. Um, she gets her powers in the comics from a blood transfusion that she gets from Bruce Banner. She gets injured. She gets a blood transfusion. Now she's got gamma radiated blood. She's a smaller Hulk. That works for me. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's comic book logic, and the way they do it, she's never as powerful as the Hulk, which also makes sense because she has less Hulk blood. Fine, all good. And but as a consequence of that, she gets to keep more of her humanity than the Hulk. I think that's another kind of weakness of the show is they brought her around while doing Professor Hulk. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it is. Yeah. If you have the Hulk who's got his full capable facilities and scientist right. brain and stuff, it's just not the same story. So in the comics, it's Bruce Banner who gives her blood because she's had a tragic accident or whatever. And then she's now the Hulk and she's a lawyer and stuff. And he still has to be brainless, dumb Hulk. <laughs> and, you know, Bruce doesn't want to be Hulk. He has to be Hulk. Right. And he like that's one of the things that was kind of compelling about Infinity War is like Hulk also feels unappreciated because he's just used as a weapon <laughs> and then stored in a closet. Right. You know what I mean? Like he's a consciousness and a body like get out, but he cannot like that's it. And they don't really coexist. And he's only ever seen, you know, he only ever sees combat. He's never brought out like, hey. Let's have a birthday party for Hulk. You know what I mean? Nobody gives a fuck about <laughs> Hulk except for when there's world-ending threats. And right. stuff. Now, this ties in. Don't worry. We're going to get back to the Hey, man, the Sax end. Dragon, I'm so sorry, dude. Like, I what? have I have to go, man. I'm so what? sorry. You're I talking. know. You tell me hours. I know. It, it just came up. My wife just came in and was like, we have to go because some things fell through. So I am so sorry. Okay, and I... Bro. I, I hate guess we'll that. We'll have to we... do a part two another time, but that's I'm hilarious. Down, I was man. sitting here all day worrying I about know. how this was going to take me until one or two in the morning for me. And, <laughs> and you're cutting it short right I'm, when I start getting into the good stuff. I'm, Get so, out so, of here. I'm so sorry. All right, Sax Dragon, thank you so much for coming out. Everybody, please give a round of applause for Sax Dragon. 
Thank you so much, man. I'm so sorry, dude. Me and Latasia, we're gonna be playing some Borderlands 3 tonight. We're gonna play some games in Let's like go. 10 minutes. I'll get on and we're just gonna have a good time. But thank All you right. guys for having me. Uh, I'm the Sax Dragon. I play tenor and soprano sax, the keytar on the stream. He didn't tell you what I do, but that's what I do. We didn't even talk about any of that. Come, come over here, request some music sometime, and I'll play it for you. Drop me a follow. All right, get out of here. We speak English. Thank good. you. I'm get out of here. All right, guys. I'm leaving. All right, guys. Love y'all. Be good. Love y'all. <laughs>